your discussion of the Octoroon expands to literature and the cultural imagination. And why do we think, both of you, I'm pleased to both of you, that enslaved women <laughs> were so fascinating to this late Victorian audience? One of the really interesting things to me about the Octoroon is that although Bell did uh, conceive of it before the end of the Civil War, he doesn't sculpt it until after emancipation in the United States has already been accomplished, right? And so part of my interest in the enslaved mixed race beauty in the Victorian imagination really is how this figure and what kind of cultural work this figure does after 1865, when the tragic Octoroon is no longer um, a f her, her potential to work as a political tool in favor of abolition is moot, right? Because abolition has been accomplished already. Um, and I think part of the answer is very easy, right? It was an opportunity to have a titillating experience all under the guise of moral outrage, right? no longer useful moral outrage. Uh, it offered audiences a way to sort of indulge in their fantasies, particularly their fantasies of the bodies of women of African descent without necessarily having to feel guilty about it. But beyond that, I think that figures like the Octoroon also allowed British audiences to think of themselves as on the right side of history when it came to slavery. Where the Octoroon ended up in Blackburn, the center of the cotton uh, industry in England also had a relationship to the slave trade. During the Civil War, right, that, that area experienced what was called the cotton famine. There were people out of work. And the popular lore is that the cotton workers in England sort of cast their lot with enslaved African Americans and, and really supported the abolition of slavery and the North and the Civil War. There's even a sculpture, right, of Abraham Lincoln, right, in, in Manchester. And yet the historical record reveals that particularly in these small cotton towns, there were clubs that supported the South, that the sympathies were more divided, I'll say. And so when a town like Blackburn purchases a work like Bell's Octoroon as you know, one of the first and, and star pieces for its newly established library, museum, and art gallery. It really makes a statement after the fact, right, that this town's sympathies were with enslaved African Americans and uh, supported the abolition of slavery. Yeah, no, I think that Mia's absolutely right in kind of thinking about the belatedness of a figure like the Octoroon and the ways that people are then kind of projecting fantasies about quote unquote exoticized bodies of women of color after emancipation. And I think one thing that is interesting to me is the fact that for some of these artists, the question of emancipation doesn't register as something to be monumentalized um, or the question of abolition doesn't register as something to be monumentalized, but rather is an artistic question that is alighted in sculpture. And so then the, the tradition of depicting an, a captive figure or an enslaved figure still holds after the abolition of slavery. And so why do artists not choose to change their practice in some way so as to reflect these larger historical shifts? And of course, here I am thinking of Anmonia Lewis's Forever Free, where in that sculpture, it was a priority for Lewis to depict people rising out of broken shackles in order to visually signify a free body rather than a captive body. And so and it's interesting to think kind of about whether artists in the 19th century are interested in being timely or timeless and kind of the different ramifications of that. That's interesting. The, this discussion has made me think of the American context of nostalgia, antebellum nostalgia, <laughs> after the war. It is almost used like a tool to keep people down. I know it's a different context there, mm -hmm. but these tropes of the beautiful uh, but tragic mulatto or octoroon and, and all the different Uncle Tom types and those typologies that were born out of slavery are even more distributed widely and deployed, you know, as a means of control in some ways. Just because it ends on this day doesn't mean it's over.